Hi everyone, this is Dr. Zachary Leung. In this video, we'll be talking about statistical transformations that the ggplot2 package are, is able to perform. So, at the most basic level, graphs can plot raw values, such as a scatter plot or line plot. But graphs are also able to plot new calculated values, such as a bar plot, a histogram, smoothers, a box plot, and perhaps some others. So to illustrate what's going on, let's look at the student's data frame, where there are 12 students with different IDs, different sexes, male or female, different scores, and different grades. So you could plot the raw data, in this case, the score against the ID, and it looks like this. Or you could plot a count of the number of students who got each grade. And this is actually a plot of new calculated values. After all, notice that there is no column called count in the original data frame. So how did ggplot you know, intelligently and figure out how to generate this plot? So what's happening is the following. Basically, ggplot has the raw data. ggplot applies a transformation, a statistical transformation to the data and, the, in a, and generates a new variable, you know, a new data set, a da new data frame with a new column called count. And then it plots the new data frame. So it doesn't plot the original data frame. It plots a new data frame that it calculated on the fly. All right. So I just wanted, in the rest of the slides, basically I'm just showing you different uh, position adjustments for geom bar. And I'm also showing you geom box plots and how to flip the coordinates. Okay, let's go to the actual R code. All right. So, as always, load the tidyverse. And here's some code to define the student's data frame. You'll notice there are 12 students. All right, there are 12 students. And these are the four columns. This is the plot of score against ID, nothing too special. Here's the plot. Here's how you plot the number of students with each grade. So on the x-axis, we have the grade and we have the, the bar geometry. So everybody likes colors. If you want, you can color the borders of the bars using the color aesthetic right here. But this only colors the border, so it's not very obvious or easy to see. Instead, it's probably a better idea to, to change the fill. It's using the fill argument. The fill is basically the inside of the bars. So this, the colors here are much more obvious. Uh, it might be more interesting to map the fill aesthetic to another variable. And for example, if you wanted to know how many males and how many females had each grade, you specify fill equals to sex. Like so. And notice that the bars are stacked on top of each other. So there's one male and then one female on top, one male, three females on top, and so on. Now, you can also specify various position adjustments to the bar charts. The default is this so-called stacking behavior, but there are other examples such as dodge and fill. So if, as I mentioned, since stack is the, the default, if you try to specify position equals to stack, notice there's a comma here, so that it's a different, this is the mapping, this is the position, then it's exactly the same as before. 
If you use the dodge position adjust adjustment, it will place the values next to each other, like so. So this makes it easier for you to see that there is one female and one male with an A, three females and one male with a B, one female and six and five males with a C. I'm not sure why the males get lower grades. Maybe because they are lazy, they're not working as hard, or maybe females are smarter. Hmm. Who knows? Anyhow, uh, the position adjustment fill, let's go to the next position adjustment. This one is a little bit unusual. Basically, for each grade, it will draw the bar to have height 1, and basically this indicates 50% of the A's are female, and 50% are male, 75% are female, and 25% are male, and so on. And remember, that's because of the counts that we have. This is exactly gives, gives us exactly the proportions described in this plot. All right. So to illustrate geom histogram, I'm going to use a different data set called diamonds, which is predefined in ggplot2. And you can just take a look at the columns. And you can plot a histogram that looks like this. In this case, I specified the bin width to be 0.5. So this is the basically the number of diamonds whose carrots are between 0 and 0 0.5 and so on. At least I, I think that is the case. Yep. But anyway, each bucket has a width of 0 0.5. That's what bin width means. Yeah, let's just check the help just to make sure I'm not you know, lying to you. Or misleading you by mistake. Blah blah blah. Bin width, bin width, bin width. Let's look at the help file. Bin width is the width of the bins, and you can specify as a numeric value, which is perhaps the most common thing, which is what I did. Okay, now let's look at box plots. So if you want to plot for each class of car the distribution of the highway mileage, this is how you do it. X is the class, and the y is the highway mileage. And obviously, you have to give it geom box plot instead of geom something else. And these are what box plots look like. Uh, so here, notice that the x axis has different names of classes of cars. And it might be easier to read and, and save space if you flip the coordinates around, which you can do using the chord flip function like so. All right, so that's all for this video lecture. See you in the next lecture. Bye.